well-rounded community um, is what it's about for me. You know, I feel like the more you work and, and play in your community, the better your community is going to be. Welcome to Clear Lake Connections, where we talk to the people behind the brands of Bay Area Houston, proudly sponsored by UTMB Health. So today with us, we have Jacob Bigger, who is the general manager of the Kima Boardwalk. Uh, tell us what that means, please. Uh, Kima Boardwalk, it's a 60-acre entertainment complex down there in this small 3,000 population town of Kima. Uh, it's a very special place. It's kind of my vision when I was actually being hired to work out there. I'm driving through, you know, Seabrook, and I'm like, where am I going? And as soon as I got over that bridge, it was like going to an oasis. Uh, so it's a very special and unique place. Um, it's free to walk around, so a lot of people like that. It's like you're purchasing everything a la carte. If you want to go to a full-service restaurant, we have that. If you're looking for a turkey leg, we got that. We got your your drinks. We have rides. We have games. Um, retail, we, we have something for everyone, including very unique special events um, from our Rock the Dot concert series in the summer to even a Kick in a Country concert series that we used to do. Uh, and had Kane Brown and some other notable artists that came out for that. So we, we do a lot of unique and special events. It's funny you mentioned Rock the Dock. The first Rock the Dock this year will be in conjunction with, if I believe, you you guys have stepped up and you will be hosting Boardwalk Bites, uh, and that's the Chambers Up Here in Evening. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. It's going to be the first time we've ever done that. Uh, it's going to be an outdoor venue. Um, Space Center is an awesome venue to do that at, but this will be something different and special allow people to social distance, spread out, um, enjoy some of that beautiful fresh air, and uh, have a great time. Rock the Dock's going to be going on, so there's some added entertainment uh, for people to do during um, Epicurean. So tell, tell me about the last year. I mean, when COVID first hit, obviously, you know, it, it, it felt like it was the end of the world. You got through that part. Des describe how you got through all of it and where we're at now. Uh, you know, it was a lot of uncertainty. You know, you're, you're starting to hear it in the news. And then the first, you know, big domino to fall was the the rodeo. And when the rodeo closed, we were like, oh, no, you know, that's kind of a big deal. And then we're like, well, maybe we'll some business will pick up. And then um, it really was the, the main domino to fall in our area where people started to look at it very seriously. And you saw the trends. Sales started to dive. And then all the regulations really ramped up from there. And there was the closure. And so, you know, us on our property going through that closure, um, you know, we really had to tighten up our resources and, and band together and work hard. And we went through that closure and then we got 46 hours notice. They said, we're going to be opening back up. The governor is going to let us open at limited capacity. And you know, we, we made it happen, you know. So to be able to throw a 60 acre entertainment complex together in 46 hours was quite a feat. So tell me about at an average day for you. I mean, you're you're running not only a theme park, but restaurants and basically the whole property. What, what does your typical day look like? Uh, it, it depends. There's every day is different at the boardwalk. You know, during the day, during the week, um, you know, you have a lot of people that are just going around and they're just trying to get outside, enjoy the weather. The rides are open every day. So, you know, that's always an option for those travelers that are um, visiting from out of state that may just be off but during the week it's a lot calm and relaxed and then the weekends it's really all about the amusement park atmosphere um when we have special events going on that can really change a lot of factors in in our day-to-day -day what's going on you know when we're doing a beer festival or a wine festival there's a lot of extra attributes that we're adding to the property for that day um a big concert series adds a little a, a bunch of different things going on but um, we stay very busy year round on the weekends. If weather's great and, you know, being in Texas and being on the coast, weather is great most of the time. Um, you know, even when you get a little bit of rain, it's usually gone in, in an hour and then you're back to sunshine. And so uh, we stay very busy year round. Well, it's funny you, you mentioned the weather because you and I were at a luncheon and we talked about uh, the damage from the freeze. Mm -hmm. And you gave me a figure on the amount of landscaping that it needed to be replaced. And it, it just kind of gave me pause. And it was like two hundred and fifty, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of landscaping. Yeah, it's, you know, maybe three quarters of a million when you really think about if you actually go in and have to replace 
everything that was replaced. Some things it's not even possible to replace depending on where it's at next to buildings. The property kind of grew around um, some of the landscaping as well. So then there's areas you're like, I don't think I can put a palm tree back there. Maybe not one that size. Um, but definitely it was an astronomical figure. And when you th- when you think about 60 acres, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it it is quite a bit. I remember, you know, during the closure of the pandemic, we had to trim the palm trees. And, you know, there's me getting a firsthand um, experience of what takes to, to trim these palm trees that we do this two, three times a year. And it's a lot of work. And I realized just how many palm trees we do have on the property uh, after that experience. So you really jumped in and, and helped where you could. And we, we talked with Roy Green in another episode and how he likes to get his hands dirty with his staff because, you know, they get to see that and, and benefit from it. Sounds like you did that with the palm trees. I'm guessing you do it with testing the rides too or, or no? Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> every, anytime I have an opportunity, they're like, hey, Jacob, you need, we need you to help us ride the roller coaster. I'm like, oh, okay, if I have to. You know, anytime you're like, you know what, I, I need a break. I need to get out of the office tired of looking at a computer screen it's like i guess i need i need to go test that roller coaster i think i think i heard something you know oh let me go test. oh yeah it was fine it was great uh so that's a that's one of the benefits of working in amusement park is um it's fun you're not confined to an office you know eight nine hours a day you're confined to this beautiful property 10 or 12 hours a day how did you get into this this line of work uh so it's kind of funny i i was interviewing someone the other day and you know, they were kind of asking what it takes to be a manager in an amusement park. And they were, I was asking, you know, what are you looking to do? What's your long-term goals? And, you know, they were like, oh, I want to be a, a history teacher. And I said, okay, you're probably going to end up working in an amusement park the rest of your life. Because that's generally how it goes. You you go into it and as a part-time job, as a means to make some money while you're going to school. And that was my story. I moved to San Antonio for college and they were... I needed a job. My dad said, Hey, you, you got $400 left in your account. That's it. Figure it out. So I was like, I better go find a job. So I heard that six flags was hiring. It's just across the road. And, um, I applied, got a job. I applied for something totally different. They gave me rides. So I said, okay, well, great. I'll do rides. Well, and it was a ton of fun. I was able to grow into a leadership role. And, and then it, as I'm, you know, going through college and I'm realizing like, actually, this is what I want to do. Um, and so it opened up a door at Kima Boardwalk. My boss at the time was at Six Flags, became the general manager of the Kima Boardwalk. And then they were like, hey, we got something for you. So I was like, there we go. And I never heard of Kima Boardwalk before that. never heard of the city of Kima. That's why that story, when I'm just coming over the bridge, I'm like, at first I was thinking like, what did I get myself into? I don't know where I'm at. It's the middle of nowhere. And then you get over the bridge and you're like, okay, this place is awesome. And so you live in this area, you move to this area. And now you're fully invested. You're, you're uh, on the, the, the chamber leadership. You're on the leadership of the Kima Economic Development Corporation. Uh, we like to talk about buy into Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you do. But w- what does buy into Bay Area mean to you? It's, it's about, you know, when everyone buys into Bay Area, it's, it's about shopping local, which is another, you know, phrase that you hear. And whether people take it to heart, we don't know. But it is a very popular, trendy thing right now. And when you're when you buy into Bay Area and you, you you go to school here, you work here, you play here, you spend here, um, all that just feeds itself, and it, and it makes that this community what it is. And you know, being involved in the chamber, it's it's an awesome experience because you get to see all the inner workings that you don't necessarily see. All that goes into having a great school district, all that goes into having you know a well-rounded community. Um, is what it's about for me. You know, I feel like the more you work and, and play in your community, the better your community is going to be. Yeah. And you guys are a big part of that and a big draw from outside of the community. I know we have space center Houston, which is, I I believe the number one tourist destination in the, in the entire state, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, how many visitors annually do you get? Uh, it, it depends on the year, but we say about 3 million visitors. Give, give me a good year. Let's yeah. forget last a, year. A good year is, you know, about 3 million visitors a year. Wow. And the city of Kima actually has some, fi- some, some numbers. It's about 4 million actually visit the city of Kima. Um, and when we actually did a report or a study and found out a lot of the traffic is coming from Houston, about a Houston visitor will visit Kima about three or four times a year. 
But we have people that we have information on from Oregon and all over the state. And obviously, we get plenty of international visitors. Um, with NASA being so close by, they're a huge international draw with the city pass, you know, that draws them out to the boardwalk because they, they go to NASA, they see that experience, they have their ticket to the boardwalk, they go to the boardwalk, they hit the museums in Houston. So um, international travel is definitely pretty prevalent. So t- tell me something about the Kima boardwalk that I probably either don't know or you feel everybody should know. Um, I would, it, it, that's, that's a really good question. It's a tough question. One thing that people don't know is that 90% of the year parking is free. Everybody thinks parking is every single day. Uh, we charge for parking on weekends um, pretty much year round and we charge on special events occasionally, a kick in a country kind of an event. Um, but generally parking's free. So, you know, Come out during the week. Things are more calm. The rides are open. The restaurants are open. You can get a lunch. You can ride a couple of rides. Um, and it's a really interesting um, experience when you come that way versus the Saturday experience where it's a lot of tourists and it's very busy. So I always recommend locals, you know, come out during the week. Try it out. It, it's a great lunch venue. We get a lot of people that come down from the port, um, you know, Bayport or Galveston Port, and they, they come up there for lunch. Um, and it's a beautiful place place for that so so i was going to ask you uh about uh, you're not from this area originally so obviously when you bring in visitors they're from out of town but before i get to that question we have to turn it over to sherry sweeney with the uh, chamber so that she can make some important announcements hello clear lake area chamber of commerce members and bay area houston i know you're listening to jacob bigger right now talk about the Kema boardwalk and the exciting news may 20th Thursday from 6 to 9, we are going to have Epicurean Evening at the Kima Boardwalk. This is going to be an outside event so you can feel safe to attend. You get to try food from over 30 different restaurants in the area. Plus, if you're 21 years or older, you get two beers, you get free parking, you even get to enjoy Rock the Dock. It's the first one of the summer series. It's a band called Escape. It's going to be a journey tribute. We're all going to love that. To get tickets, go to clearlakearea.com. You buy one ticket and you get everything you can enjoy at the Kima Boardwalk. Don't miss your chance to enjoy food from all over Clear Lake Area. And we're back. Uh, So I I was going to ask you, I know every time I have out-of-town visitors, like international, uh, I have family from Scotland that I bring in, they want to go to Kima. So what are some of your go-to places, obviously, other than the place you work, in this area that you would take your out-of-town visitors to? Uh, Well, Galveston, obviously, everybody wants to go to the beach. Um, You know, where I'm from, Colleen, there's no beach. We have a lake, and it's rocky, and it's not, you know, it's nothing like the beach experience. The funny thing is the first beach I ever saw was in college, and then the second beach, you know, was after moving here after college. So um, I love the beach, so that's definitely going to be one of my main locations. Uh, There's a number of cool restaurants and and hot spots down there in Galveston I think are great. Uh, in, in Kima, um, you know, you have really cool, interesting restaurants like T-Bone Tom's is, is obviously kind of a popular one that you want to bring out uh, your family to. It's a, one of those. It was on TV places. So, you, you know, people want to see that. But um, generally, when I have friends come into town, we, we're going to make a Galveston trip. So what uh, what would you like to, to tell the audience about Kima? Any, anything you've got coming up, anything you feel like they need to know? especially this being tourism month? Uh, Well, definitely come out to Epicurean. I mean, that's going to be the first time we've done that. So we're excited to be a part of it where we think it's, it's something um, that could potentially happen multiple years uh, from now. We think it's, it's an awesome place for that uh, type of event, but you know, we're, we're getting things back to normal. We have our firework Fridays. We have our kick, our rock the dock concert series starting on Thursday you know, May, especially Memorial Day weekend is, is kicking off the summer and we're going to have plenty of activities and fun. And we just want to get everybody out there. You know, it's it's refreshing to see people out around the property, smiling, all the families and children. And uh, we just want to get back to that. We want to get back to doing what we what we love. And that's taking care of people and showing them a great time. So you guys are in the business of providing fun and entertainment, right? And it, but it also sounds like you and, and maybe your team have fun. And so how do you foster that, that, that idea of having fun, but creating fun for the, 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 the customers? 
Well, it's it's a serious job, and safety is is paramount when you're talking about running an amusement park. But if you want to cultivate fun and, and a fun atmosphere for your guests, you got to make sure your employees are having a good time, and because they're the ones that are giving that experience to the guests. And so we do lots of things to to have fun with the employees. You know, little team events and you know uh, a, a little party that we'll throw for them occasionally, where they can bring their families out to the boardwalk or. We'll give them passes to go to other other venues out in the area, um, some that are not even owned by Landry's. You know, we we do ticket trades with different businesses um, that want to send their employees to the Chemo Boardwalk to use as incentives, and we get those incentives and we give them out to our employees and do different activities around that so that they can enjoy it and have fun. And it's just you have to foster fun with your staff, and you got to realize that your employees are treating your guests, so you should be treating your employees. Well, and it's also great to know that you can get a turkey leg without having to go to the rodeo or the Renaissance Fair. So uh, if you want a turkey leg, and I know turkey legs are a big thing, so if you need a turkey leg, come down to the boardwalk. Yeah, you get, <laughs> that's it's one of the top three questions probably asked, where can I get a turkey leg? Number one is, where's the restroom? <laughs> <laughs> What's number two? Number two, where's the ticket booth? Okay, makes sense. Uh, number four for me would be, where do I get my beer? <laughs> yes. Well, the great thing is it's right next to the turkey leg. So so thank you, Jacob, uh, thank for you. joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure and uh, much continued success to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.